From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. I am uh, ridiculously biased towards her, so I just own that up front. How Chelsea Clinton supported her mom today at a college rally. Our new poll shows Arizona is increasingly turning blue. Who's leading in key Arizona races? A lot of things that they'll just throw pills at you for, but you can't even have a discussion, an open and honest discussion with your physician or your primary care team about this natural herb. Why some veterans are supporting the legalization of recreational marijuana. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Carla Liriano. And I'm David Coltabiano. Thank you for joining us. Hillary Clinton is ahead in Arizona. That's according to a poll just conducted by the Arizona Republic, the Morrison Institute, and Cronkite News. Reporter Alicia Gonzalez shares the results. Arizona could go blue when it comes to electing a president, but Republican Senator John McCain's lead seems safe. In the statewide poll by the Arizona Republic, the Morrison Institute, and Cronkite News, of 713 likely voters, 39% said they plan to vote for Clinton, while 34% said they plan to vote for Trump. Undecided voters make up almost 21% of likely voters. The margin of error was 4.3 percentage points. Not over till it's over. However, I think we're, the Hillary campaign is in a stage now where they're solidifying, fortifying the mandate for her to govern uh, in January. There's a lot of people, especially the millennial age, that are voting for Hillary Clinton. Uh, uh, it's not so much a vote for Hillary Clinton, it's a vote against Donald Trump, if they vote. We're going to continue all the good work that we are doing. We, in fact, we started this 21 offices uh, in the month of August, we built a pretty good, strong network, and we're going, we're going to continue to do that. But it looks like the Democratic Party is stepping up its Arizona game, with Bernie Sanders, Chelsea Clinton, and Michelle Obama visits this week. Here's what the Republican Party is going to do in response. We're going to tell people what the Republican Party has to offer, what Mr. Trump has to offer, whereas Hillary Clinton is all about lies and just trying to dig up the past. and distracting from what should be the discussion, that is, the future of the U.S. If Arizona is really turning blue, how did we get here? You know, there has been steadily a maturization of the Arizona voter. That Arizona voters have never been a knee-jerk reactions. They've been very smart. We've been very smart about our candidates. Our relationship with Mexico is so important, and I think some of the stances that, that Trump has taken on immigration, make Mexico build the wall, et cetera, is, is getting pretty tired here with a lot of people because they know it's not practicable. They're our number one trading partner. But the executive director of the AZ Republican Party says the phone calls they are making to likely voters shows a trend toward Trump. Yeah, there would be a few independents who will break into Clinton, but we see majority going towards the Republican Party. The poll also asked who respondents plan to vote for in the Senate race. 51.5% say they plan to re-elect John McCain, while 40% plan to vote for Ann Kirkpatrick. The margin of error was 3.7 percentage points. I think McCain's done. I think, I think his, his future has been uh, solidified. I think he'll be victorious. I think a lot of the, con the congressional races are done. The voters need to understand that the John McCain that is currently in, in office is not the John McCain that was elected in the 80s. Uh, his time in, in the Senate has just made him more angry. McCain spokeswoman Lorna Romero said in a statement, the latest poll is another indicator of the tremendous support for John McCain as we enter the final weeks of this campaign. The momentum is clearly on our side. But the two parties do agree on one thing. I think everything is up for grabs right now. Nothing's a done deal. I mean, we're, we're just, we're in the first week of early voting. You know, every day is election day now in Arizona. We conducted the same poll back in August and found the gaps between candidates only got larger, with Clinton gaining more support. For the full poll results, visit cronkitenews.azpbs.org. In the Broadcast Center, Alicia Gonzalez, Cronkite News. Many conservatives and Trump supporters have taken a social media to call into, into question the methodology of this poll, especially since the results have made nationwide headlines in major news organizations. We asked our polling partner at the Morris Institute to explain why these numbers are an accurate reflection of Arizona's electorate. 
again, we're part of a university, so we, we spend a lot of time. Um, in fact, when we send out our poll to various different news sources, we have a whole five-page explanation of our methodology that goes into very detail about how we weigh, what our sampling error is, what our methodology, how we chose our respondents, et cetera. And any good news source would look at that methodology to make sure that it, it uh, met certain acceptable standards. Multimedia report on this most recent poll, plus a full explanation of the methodology, is online. Go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Here in Arizona, early voting has been underway for a week. And nationwide, more than 2 million votes have already been cast for this election. At least 45 million people across the country are expected to vote before November 8th. A former first daughter is in the Valley campaigning to become first daughter once again. Chelsea Clinton visited Arizona State University's Tempe campus in hopes of rallying the millennial vote on behalf of her mother. Cronkite News reporter Katie Beery was there for the latest big event from the Clinton campaign. Katie? It's been a little bit more than two hours since Chelsea Clinton wrapped up her event at ASU in Tempe. Among her promises were education reform for the numerous ASU students and millennials in the crowd. Welcome to Arizona State University, Chelsea Clinton. Hi, Arizona. Hi, ASU. Hello, hello. Um, With just hours before the final presidential debate, country. Chelsea Clinton joined so, the stage um, at ASU in Tempe addressing of hundreds of college students. The limits of our ambitions don't stop at the end of college. She was joined by Democratic Senate candidate Ann Kirkpatrick, who promised that come November, Arizona will be blue across the board. Uh, it's pretty exciting. We're all in this together. We have an opportunity to make history in November and elect the first woman president and the first female senator from Arizona. Clinton was supported by the ASU Young Democrats Club. President Austin Marshall said that this election could change of course, the course of history. Arizona is never going to be taken for granted again in any election in the future. It's always going to be a battleground state. And like I said, that's on top of that with the uh, demographic changes that are happening. Among Clinton's promises today were an education plan that would cover 80 percent of all Arizona residents. Even if I weren't a parent, I would be working as hard as I can for my mom and her campaign and for Democrats up and down the ballot. So currently, um, the group that supports Chelsea Clinton is here tearing down her earlier stage. Um, and of course, her mother, Hillary Clinton, is getting ready for the debate, which should be going on in about an hour. Live in Tempe, Katie Beery, Cronkite News. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump will face off for the last time in a presidential debate tonight. The debate will be held at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Tonight's debate is expected to cover topics such as immigration, the Supreme Court, and the fitness of each candidate. Ahead of tonight's debate, Trump's running mate Mike Pence rallies in Colorado saying that the media favors Hillary Clinton. You know, ever since I joined this campaign, it's just been amazing. It's like it's been it's been two on one every day with the with the national media doing half of Hillary Clinton's work for her. The Trump campaign has been on the attack before tonight's debate. Trump's daughter, Ivanka, also spoke about the media bias today at Fortune's Powerful Women's Summit in California. An Arizona high school student has the honor of attending the debate tonight. Zhang Dong Wang, a 12th grade student at Hamilton High School in Chandler, won a national contest for an essay he wrote to the candidates on improving the effectiveness of government. We caught up with him in Las Vegas to find out what he wants to hear from the candidates. Um, I want to see them talk more about the policy, and uh, even though there's already been a lot of talk on foreign policy, I think it would, it would be interesting because uh, since the attack on Mosul just recently started, um, that would, that's really important to me as well. And you can catch the debate right here on Arizona PBS. Starting at 6 p.m., PBS NewsHour will have the full live debate. At 8 p.m., a special episode of Arizona Horizon will have in-depth analysis from hosts Ted Simons and local experts. Religion is a topic that often comes up during presidential debates. Coming up on Cronkite News, where Christian voters are leaning in this election. Plus, why some veterans want recreational marijuana to be legalized.
about now. Tickets are now available for the annual Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism Luncheon, held Monday, November 21st at the Sheraton Grand Phoenix. Join media industry and community leaders in honoring this year's recipient, award-winning journalist and CBS Evening News anchor, Scott Pelley. The annual Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism Luncheon. Cronkite.asu.edu slash luncheon. It's the issue that's seemingly been a non-issue in the race for the presidency, religion. Reporter Joey Carrera spoke to Valley religious leaders about politics from the pulpit. Both candidates identify themselves as Christians, but after talking with theologians, neither candidate is finding full support from those with strong religious beliefs. When Barack Obama was running for president in 2008, the country was 54% white and Christian, and today that number is 43%. Jones says the very fabric of our nation is being rewoven with new threads of social change and increased Hispanic immigration. He says the proof is in our legislation. If you are a conservative white Christian in this country, uh, just over the last two election cycles, you have seen your numbers go from majority to minority status and a very central issue to use uh, same-sex marriage go from an issue where you were in the majority to an issue where you're very much in the minority. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump both identify themselves as Christians, but the candidates' positions on topics like abortion, social issues, and their personal character don't sit well with many practicing Christians. You have two candidates who are just sort of spewing venom and all of us caught in the middle and none of us like it. One with uh, this womanizing kind of candidate and, and the other uh, supporting a whole host of issues that I don't think many evangelicals feel comfortable supporting. But according to a Pew Research poll from the summer, 78% of white evangelical Christians who are registered to vote planned to cast their ballots for Donald Trump. They have just not been able to divorce evangelicalism from Americanism. So what, what I c consider is American idolatry. A kind of crack in that white Christian coalition it's going to be because of Mormons, white Catholics, and white mainline Protestants are a little more reluctant to get behind Trump. Pope Francis hasn't been shy to share the Catholic viewpoint on building a wall or the Syrian refugee crisis. The social understanding of who we are as a people and what our responsibilities are to one and another in terms of service and support are very well supported by the Democratic Party. But the ballot is filled with a host of ecumenical issues that are equally as important. Catholic Church has always supported individuals voting their conscience. In other words, really looking at the issues and forming their conscience so they know um, really what the hierarchy of, of importance. Robert Jones will continue the discussion on politics in the presidential race on a panel discussion held at ASU tomorrow evening. A link to the event will be posted on cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Joey Carrera, Cronkite News. Military veterans are among those in favor of Proposition 205, which would allow recreational use of marijuana. Cronkite News reporter Brian Four talked to vets at the recent Southwest Cannabis Conference. Brian, what are you hearing? Veterans tell me they want Proposition 205 to pass because they believe it will give them and others more legal access to marijuana. Veterans were among those who set up booths at the Cannabis Conference. They're supporting Prop 205 for a variety of reasons. Many can qualify for medical marijuana in Arizona now, but the federal government considers it an illegal drug. And that means veterans could risk losing VA benefits. There's a lot of things that they'll just throw pills at you for, but you can't even have a discussion, an open and honest discussion with your physician or your primary care team about this natural herb. Even if they don't tell the VA, veterans are using marijuana to treat a variety of medical issues, including PTSD. Everyone here in the entire country says that mar marijuana has some type of medical benefits, so we, you know, as the veteran community, want the, uh, the VA to acknowledge the same and allow testing on veterans to combat the symptoms of PTSD. Arizona State Representative and veteran Mark Cardenas wants veterans to be able to use marijuana as an alternative to opioids, which he called powerful and sometimes dangerous drugs. Some veterans oppose using marijuana for medical or recreational purposes. They're among critics who argue Prop 205 is a loophole for those who just want to get high. In the Broadcast Center, Brian Four, Cronkite News. Two Arizona health insurers will raise rates by more than 50% next year. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Arizona and the Centene Corps were both approved by the Arizona Department of Insurance to increase rates. Blue Cross Blue Shield will be, be available in all counties but Maricopa. In Maricopa, Centene Corps and better plan will increase rates by about 75 percent. 
Obama administration officials say more people are expected to sign up for Obamacare next year. Enrollment is predicted to grow by 9% in 2017, with 3.5 million uninsured people enrolling. Over 9 million people are expected to re-enroll. This comes after the number of people signed up dropped from March to June by 700,000. Meanwhile, Senator John McCain is continuing to voice his opposition to Obamacare. He tweeted today, quote, Arizona families are demanding affordability, accessibility, and choice in health care, not expensive, restrictive, and poor quality Obamacare. McCain has repeatedly called for a repeal of the Affordable Care Act. It's been a while since the monsoons rattled the valley with booming thunderstorms. But we're learning more from Arizona researchers on the true dangers of lightning strikes. That's coming up on Cronkite News. It's 92 degrees and sunny skies in Arizona today, but will that beautiful weather stick with us for the rest of the week? I'll have your full forecast up here next on Cronkite News. One, two, three, four, five. I'm always searching to feel like I fit into something. We are the people that we are because of our past. I'm just one of many who stop being silent. It's just proof of how far we have come. Make sure in all the hustle and bustle, we don't lose sight of why we're here. It all boils down to communicating the lives we live. If you look closely, they've got a story to tell. It connects with you in a very deep way. We wish you love, peace, and so Come with us on this great adventure. ideas open up a whole new world of possibilities. The more you know about history, the more you know about yourself. The sky is the limit. New information suggests lightning is far more dangerous than what we once thought. Cronkite News reporter Sarah Lichtman went to Tucson to find out what this striking new data is all about. Growing up, counting the seconds between a thunderclap and a lightning strike suffice to determine a storm's distance. But experts say that is only a myth. As a general rule of safety, when thunder roars, go indoors. Lightning can be much more uh, dangerous than what we had previously thought, that it can travel very long distances away from a parent storm. Vaisala, a company that operates the lightning detection network from Tucson, worked with the World Meteorological Organization and other experts to determine the longest duration and the longest horizontal distance of lightning flashes. They recorded one flash lasting over seven and a half seconds in southern France, lasting longer than this one caught on video and a flash nearly 200 miles long starting from just south of Tulsa to the western border of Oklahoma. These are by far the longest that we've seen. Most lightning strikes are only going to travel for a, most a few tens of miles away from where they originate, and they're only going to last for normally less than a second. Vaisala created a new lightning detection device that can triangulate exactly where a lightning strike originates and how many times a lightning strike hits the ground over long periods of time. This graph shows the frequency of lightning in a 24-hour period, specifically in this case during the month of July. Ron Hawley, a meteorologist at Vaisala, stresses the importance of not being outside in areas where lightning is occurring, especially during Arizona's monsoon season. Being in the top of a mountain in the afternoon in the western states is not a good idea. 
there are no reliable certain things that you can do except not be there. Holly is currently working on a study to gather information to better estimate how many deaths by lightning occur every year. Thankfully, there is no lightning in Arizona today or for the rest of the week. However, you may see some isolated showers throughout Arizona, if any at all. For the rest of today, the temperatures are looking at 91 in Phoenix, 76 in Prescott, 60 in Flagstaff. And as you can see the trend, it starts to cool down as we go further north in Arizona. For the rest of today, going into tonight, clear skies all night. 6 and 8 p.m. It's in the 80s and it does dip down into the 70s going into 10 p.m. Here's what you can expect for the rest of the week. 97 degrees Thursday, Friday and Saturday. The weekend is looking pretty sunny and then Monday there is a chance of rain only 10 percent and then it continues to be sunny for the rest of the week. I'm Sarah Lichterman with your Cronkite weather. It's a beautiful day in this local neighborhood. Coming up on Cronkite News, how a grant is helping communities blossom. This isn't reality television. I feel like Hamilton reached out from history and wouldn't let me go until I told his story. I make no apology for my actions. I would do the same again. How we come so far and yet have so far to go. Right there, coming up. In 1920s Melbourne. Careful with the hand luggage. My pistol's in there somewhere and it may still be loaded. Phryne Fisher is a detective. Things could get interesting around here. Thought they already were. Who isn't afraid to live a little. I hope you're not concealing a dangerous weapon under that skirt. I'm concealing a lot of things. Why do you think you could just run off on your own? Because I'm carrying a gun. The irresistible series, Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries. Saturday night at 10 on Arizona PBS. Hi, I'm Charlie Rose. As part of the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication at ASU, Arizona PBS is providing a state-of-the-art venue for the next generation of journalists. From newsrooms in Washington, Los Angeles, and here in Phoenix, students engage in real-time, real-world news reporting, broadcast production, and online innovation. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS working together in new ways to bridge the classroom to the community in the digital age. Discover so much more at azpbs.org slash schedule, where it's easier than ever to find out what's on Arizona PBS. Access interactive digital and printable program guides, repeat times, and full episode descriptions. Watch program previews of best bets for the coming week. Search by title to find your favorite shows. You can even add programs to your calendar and get email reminders when they're about to start. It's easier than ever to find out what's on Arizona PBS. Discover so much more at azpbs.org slash schedule. Well, love is in the air. Community love, that is. Reporter Anthony Marroquin took a look at what the city of Phoenix is doing to help residents love their neighborhoods. Hidden in the old arts district along Grand and 11th Avenues lies an old park not many people have heard of. And families come hang out at the, uh, the tables here and just, you know, chill out. It's, it's a great thing to have in the neighborhood. The park may not be bigger than a house lot, but it's important to the community here to give their kids even a small plot of land where they can feel safe while playing. When you beautify something, people don't want to deface it. When something is old and dirty and unkempt and people just ignore it, well then it's a, it's a perfect target. Community members heard that the city was offering grants to improve neighborhoods through the Love Your Block program. They applied and used the money they were awarded to spruce up the park the way they wanted to see it improved. Local children even got a chance to leave their mark on their improvements by painting a big part of the mural right behind me. No one knows more about their community than the community itself. This is a great way for communities to address the needs that they see and then make the change they want to see happen. The program is in its second year and provides five communities with $1,000 to improve their block. It's supported by two full-time AmeriCorps VISTA members who also aim to connect the community with the city by giving residents insights into other programs they could use. Like who to contact when they have issues with security. Um, and it's a way to kind of you know, make sure everyone is well informed and that city resources are used but maybe the most important outcome, the excess of smiling faces that get to play in the new park. 
The application process is competitive, but you can get some help with your application at the Broadway Heritage Neighborhood Resource Center on October 24th and at the Ocotillo Library on November 8th. In Phoenix, Anthony Marroquin, Cronkite News. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, we'll look at increasing concerns over the bee population in Arizona and around the country, and we'll learn about a grant that expands volunteer efforts in Phoenix. That's the next Arizona Horizon. I'm Judy Woodruff on the next News Hour, looking ahead to live coverage of the final presidential debate between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. That's Wednesday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.